Tensions with Russia over the war in Ukraine are giving EU border states and aspiring members the jitters. How are people there coping and what is the EU doing to reassure them? Hello and welcome to People First, the EPP Group's monthly program on issues with impact on people like you. Joining us to answer some of your questions is Sandra Calniete. You're the Latvian uh, vice chair of the EPP group here in the European Parliament, responsible for relations with Eastern neighbors uh, as well as enlargement. Uh, before we get to our questions, uh, you were prevented by Russia from going there to attend the funeral of uh, slain opposition leader Boris Nemtsov. You spent hours in the airport. Is that how it worked? Is that what happened there? Uh, when I arrived, I have a diplomatic passport and according to agreement what we have between uh, Latvia and uh, Russia, um, uh, the, those with diplomatic passports don't need to apply for entry visa. And for me it was a complete surprise that apparently there was a problem. It took more than two hours and the last plane back to Latvia left. Uh, before they officially announced me that according to Russian legislation, uh, the code and uh, paragraph 22 prim, I am <laughs> forbidden entry into Russia. So it was a bureaucratic way of keeping you from yeah, coming in. Yeah. Um, Mr. Nemtsov's murder is just one of the latest issues uh, troubling EU-Russia relations. Let's take a look at some more of them in our report. The slaying of Boris Nemtsov, a leader of the Russian Democratic Opposition, drew strong condemnation from the European Parliament. The resolution spearheaded by the EPP group requested an independent international investigation. Ms. Kalniete called the murder a hybrid message of Russian President Putin's system to the liberal democratic world. Her comment alluded to the concept of hybrid warfare, a mix of conventional and unconventional means as seen among pro-Russian forces in Ukraine. The resolution also called on Russian authorities to release all political prisoners, including Nadia Savchenko, a member of the Ukrainian parliament. Belarus is one of six countries in the EU's Eastern Partnership, which encourages reform in exchange for trade, aid and closer ties. Ms. Kalniete, a former Latvian foreign minister, has called for the release of all political prisoners there ahead of the Eastern Partnership summit, which Latvia will host in May. Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko, long considered Europe's last dictator, has shown some willingness to reform and has hosted Ukraine peace talks in Minsk. The Eastern Partnership also includes Ukraine, Moldova, Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan. EU Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker, a member of the EPP, has made clear that there will be no new member states during his five-year tenure. The process, he says, is going to take time. In the meantime, the Parliamentary Assembly, Euronest, grouping EU and Eastern Partnership states, an EPP group initiative, continues to promote closer ties. So quickly on Euronest, so we know a little bit more about that. How is that promoting closer ties? How is that preparing some of these countries for membership eventually? Membership uh, is not the, the main idea of uh, cooperation between European Parliament and uh, Eastern Partnership uh, countries' parliaments. What is important that we have a dialogue, a format where we can exchange views, how we understand development in Europe, in our countries and what is important. And in this particular session what was important and this is a remarkable achievement that we with large majority we passed an, a resolution on Russian aggression in Ukraine. Now, what you're saying though is that it's not all or nothing at all. It's not membership or nothing. And, and, and this kind of, I think, might reassure some people who have enlargement fatigue. Here's one. Concernant l'élargissement, faut-il aller au-delà des 28 États membres actuels, alors que déjà bon nombre d'États membres traînent la patte au niveau économique et que je ne pense pas que l'élargissement puisse amener une amélioration de la situation. Okay, there's a tough customer and he's not the only one. How do you sell enlargement to a guy like that? Um, to a guy from Charleroi, it's very simple. If he would look in 2004, then he would see that Charleroi airport is a just small local airport. Now it has grown 10 times. There are more than 6 million passengers and there are 250 million euro of added value. So and there's something in it for him. 3,000 yeah. 
3,000 new jobs. Majority of passengers to that airport come exactly from the countries which joined European Union in 2004 and 2008. Okay, let's, let's uh, shift gears a bit and go back to this relations with Russia uh, and relations uh, with the EU with Russia. Here's a question on that. Et j'aimerais savoir pourquoi toujours diaboliser la Russie, pour pas, pourquoi pas voir des choses positives qui s'y passent. Je suis sûr qu'il y a des choses positives qui s'y passent par rapport au peuple, etc. Il y a beaucoup de négativité, etc. Ok, now, uh, the EPP group will be hosting an event in, in April on, on relations with Russia. Is there any light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, we do have relations, we have trade relations uh, with Russia, energy. They are an important partner. When Iron Curtain fell, we believed that the new era of cooperation begins. And we were very open to co englobe Russia, to cooperate with Russia, which is a mutual, mutual benefit to both parties. And what happened in 2014 was building up for years. Now, it is really in the hands of Russia to understand that this is not a behavior in the globally independent world. So the ball is in their court. In Absolutely. Um, on Ukraine, uh, the referendums in Crimea and in, in Donetsk, uh, they were criticized as being sham votes. Here's a question on that. Why uh, Europe would, uh, would like not to uh, organ organize a referendum in Ukraine for to know who want to be with the Russian and who want to stay with the Ukraine. I think that the people have to choose themselves what they want. I wonder what the Kiev government would say about that. Yeah, exactly, because it's not for Europe to organize a referendum in any of our member states or in any country in the world. It's the decision of the government, of the legislative uh, assembly to decide regarding the referendum. How can we solve this Ukrainian question? It, but some people argue that it is better that they remain non-aligned so that Russia not be provoked. Ukrainians by electing their president, by electing new reform-minded assembly, they choose their way. And all accusations that this is something which is manipulated by the evil forces from European Union, which is the discourse of, of Russia yep. today, they are absolutely unfounded. Let's, let's shift to, to the Baltics. Oh yes, and, and 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 how nervous are people there? How nervous are you about? And a lot, of, a number of people and analysts say that the, that could be the next place that that Russia tests the West. How worried are you about an invasion or hybrid warfare? Uh, to be worried, it will not help to defend our independence. What is important that our government is fully conscious that we have to raise our defense budget to 2% uh, from GDP, that we have to strengthen our um, defense capacities, that we have to uh, make all possible diplomatic efforts to explain to our partners in NATO and in, in, in EU what is the current state of affairs in Latvia and why do we need them. And just a sense of how it is for the people on the ground there. Uh, can you give an anecdote or an example of how it I is will to give example how, from my to, to family. show how, how people feel on the ground I will give you an example in, in from my family. Uh, my grandson, nine years old, once, uh, it was half a year ago, he came back from school and said, is it true, Granny, that there will be a war? Which means that even small children, not understanding what it is about, that it's not electronic game, they are speaking about it. Trying times for the EU and for countries to the east. Uh, it's going to take some skillful diplomacy to deal with this. Thanks for joining us on People First, Madame Kanyate. My pleasure. Find out more about the activities of the largest political force in Parliament by checking eppgroup.eu. Until next time, thanks for watching.